those little passive names we were talking about. And then you're just looking out for such things as a player making a bad quality pass and just stepping in there and coaching them to try and give you a better quality to just make the pass go where it's supposed to go and to really work on concentrating on getting that bit of it right. And then of course if there's a few passes on and they're making bad choices giving it to players that are marked, the players that are being very quickly closed down, maybe a ball being intercepted, you're asking them to pick better selections of passes. Can you choose somebody where that's not going to happen? They're not likely to get closed down, they've gone and found a good space and you see them just move that ball on quickly and that's it. That's just the setup for every attacking session. But as I say, it's more relevant than the one we're running through here, I guess, than it is the sum. But you need that at the beginning of all sessions to make them work properly. So what are the points that are likely to come up aside from those basic key factors when it comes to creating and exploiting space? You don't want the player standing on the ball and just looking around and taking much too much time over it and all these passing lanes are getting closed down. You're saying, when you see the opportunity to move that ball on, just do it. The decision has now been made for you. That is the most obvious pass. Do it quickly. Now, just to bring up a small point here. I'm doing this because if I did, we'd be here at Christmas, so I'm not going to do that. And I just won a fiver by mentioning the word Christmas and making it relatable to what I'm doing. It's a long story. Anyhow, break the game down and make the coaching games as specific as you need them to be. And it's amazing how quickly players will come on when you do things that way. Let's, why don't we, while we're at it, just take a very brief look at what one of those sessions might look like. So let's say a good one here, a nice tasty one might be the holding midfield player. And as I'm saying that, I'm beginning to regret I didn't think of it before we started because, oh, Problem solved. Goalkeeper to the rescue. I was going to say that when you're doing a session like this, it's usually a good idea to put that player in a different colour than everybody else. So it makes it more identifiable to me and to all the players. Now we can all easily see the movements of this player. So let's have a look at what this player might be doing. It doesn't mean that there's lots of space on the opposite side of the pitch. If only we can get the ball in. And that ball gets lost. For however short a time it might be, we now no longer have a holding midfield player at all. So he's unable to protect the very spaces that we want him to protect when it comes to the defending phase of the game.